But when I heard about the ladder, I'm like, oh, that's a really unique challenge because the, the original is so ingrained in our head and specifically that Robin yeah. Williams performance. How did you tackle that remake? Like, how did you go into that process knowing that there's this, honestly, this shadow? I'm sure Will Smith had the same problem. The shadow of that Robin Williams was casting on the pro a project, at least from my point of view. Yeah, I, I approached it from, so I have to wind back the clock. Um, Aladdin sort of come into my universe once before, and it's like, oh, no, I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> and then uh, Disney did the Cinderella remake, which right. I thought was fantastic. And what mm -hmm. I lo loved so much about the Cinderella remake is it took the same story basically, and just gave the characters human motivations rather than cartoon motivations, that they really had to do things that flesh and blood people would do, not animated characters would do. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and those reasons had to be different. Um, and so as I approached the story from that perspective, um, I was looking at, well, Jasmine. So Jasmine as a character, um, you just can't bring that animated character through the live action movie because she will seem so helpless and weak and frustrating to watch. And so you know, the idea that Jasmine is trying to learn how to rule this kingdom is interesting. That's a, a fundamental shift I could make from the very first pitch. Mm -hmm. The dynamic between Genie and um, Aladdin, I really saw them more as as bros, as like as pals. Like you've never had a friend like me. And so what if it was more sort of a kind of a Seth Rogeny kind of dudes hanging out kind of vibe between them rather than the Robin Williams cocaine uncle kind of thing. And <laughs> when and when you, you from the early pitches, like that's really the vibe I was going for. And so I knew that whoever was playing the genie, it wasn't Will at that point, but it was, it was hopefully going to be Will or somebody like Will, could, didn't have to play in the same lane. That he could do his own thing, that there wouldn't be that assumption that you have to have the same kind of manic energy at every point. It could be a, a different thing. Um, so that, you know, the characters were going through much the same story, but the reasons for how they were doing it were working a lot differently. Jafar is another good example, is that he can't be as mustache twirly. Right. Um, he, he needs to be seen as a viable sort of physical threat and not just, you know, uh, obvious villain from the first moment he shows up. Right, exactly. And and that's what makes a good, that's what makes a good um, antagonist, generally yeah. speaking, is, is not the, the twirling mustaches has been, shouldn't really be what we yeah. write anymore. Now, Charlie's Angels, which was mm -hmm. uh, a monster hit when it came out, the first one, yeah. uh, for people was, when people that weren't around then, Charlie's Angels was a very big deal when it came out. And that was, that was your first kind of like blockbuster monster hit, right? Out of the gate. Yeah, it was the first one that I'd sort of really come on board, you know, at, at the start and sort of helped build from, build up from the bottom. And that was, again, an example of, you know, taking all the things I loved about the original and right. recognizing, okay, so how do we do this as a movie? How does the things I love about this as a series, how do we do this in two hours? What are the audience expectations of how a story like this wants to tell itself in two, in two hours? Um, probably that and Big Fish sort of rival each other for the most difficult things I've written because mm. in Charlie's Angels, you have three protagonists, each of whom need their own plot lines, their own personal plot lines. You have a villain, you have a twist, you have all the sort of normal action movie action comedy things that need to happen. So every scene has to do a lot of work to service very many things. And so um, making that all work together and the puzzle pieces fit was really tough. Um, but I, we approached it mostly from a sense of what do we want this movie to feel like? And so I really wanted to get that sense of being incredibly proud of the girls for sort of what they've done, which you don't think about in an action movie. But mm -hmm. um, these women are really really good at what they do but they're giant dorks when they're off the job and so that's what makes them feel human and relatable is that they are you know they're goofy and flawed in ways that you can sort of key into they're not perfect yeah like you don't want to have a beer with rambo like generally no. speaking <laughs> no no i mean and comedies are never about cool people comedies are about dorks and so I, we had to find a way that they could be great at their job but also be dorks you know off the job